Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Clark and today I'm going to teach you how to code your own pixel art. This template has a really cute valentine in an envelope with hearts. So if you want this exact template, you can code along with me. It's in the description. But I hope that this video will also help you with beginning coding if you have your own pixel art. Just make sure that your picture is ready to go and that you have a space to write your questions. And let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I always do is I come up to the percentage. I set it to 75 so I can see everything on the screen. Now we're going to be writing our own custom questions and we're coding it so that if someone answers your question correctly, then it changes colors and the pixels pop up. Therefore, the first step is to write your questions. You do that just by clicking on the box and typing. And then you can adjust the font and color and things like that if you want to. So go ahead and write your own questions and answer them as well. Once you have your questions written and your answers written, we're going to talk about the actual coding. We are actually only going to write nine codes. We're gonna write a code for each answer box. When I'm writing my code, I wanna tell the computer two things. I wanna tell the computer what box I'm talking about. So this box or this box or this box. And then I'm gonna tell the computer what needs to be in that box for the code to work. In other words, I'm telling the computer the answer to the question, nine, eight, February, so on and so forth. Now I said you need to tell the computer what box you're talking about. In order to do that, you need to tell the computer the name of the box. And we name the box by telling it the column and the row. So this box here is called B4. And when we're looking at the row, I know that this is a big box, so the row is four, five, six, and seven. Those are shaded there to show you. But when you're naming the box, you use the first number, which is the four. So this box is B4, column B, row four, and the answer is nine. That's what I'm gonna write in my code. This box is B, that's the column, eight, that's the row. This box is B12. So you tell the computer what box you're talking about, and you tell the computer the answer to your question. And with that being said, let's look at the actual code down here. I would recommend writing it down. It's the th same things I was talking about, but with a couple symbols. It is equals dollar sign column dollar sign row equals answer. Column and row, that's what we were looking at, so B4. The answer for this one would be 9. For example, the code for this box is going to be equals dollar sign B dollar sign 4 equals 9. The code for this box will be equals dollar sign B dollar sign 8 equals 8. The code for this box will be equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals February. So let's go ahead and start coding. Click on the box you actually want to code and let's open up our coding window. To do that, click on format. If you don't have this window, click here. Come down to conditional formatting. We're gonna use this window the whole time. If it disappears, that's how you can get it back. Now, here's the coding window and you can see it's got this box selected, which is good because that's the box we're coding. I always start at the bottom and tell the computer what color I want that box to turn. And I am picking colors from my actual design. So before I open this and figure it out, I usually will click over here and pick one of the colors. So let's do the lightest, the light pink. And I like to figure out where that color is located. So it's the lightest one in the custom colors. Then I'm going to click back on the box I'm actually coding, which is this one. And now that I've looked at it, it's just going to be easier to find. So I click here and I pick the color. It's that light pink. Next, I'm going to write the code. To do that, come to format cells if. It says is not empty, but we're going to change that. Click and go to the very last option, custom formula is. Underneath, there's a box and that's where you write your formula that we were looking at. So it is equals dollar sign B dollar sign four equals nine. That B4 is the column and row of this box that's selected because that's the one we're coding. The nine is the answer to my question three times three. So put your answer to your question. Now keep this open, but I'm gonna close it just to show you that this box is technically coded. I told the computer if there's a nine in it, turn it that shade of pink. If there's something else or nothing in it, don't change the color. But if there's a nine, turn it pink and the code did work. 
So we're only coding this box. And what we want to do now is just add in the pixels from the artwork so that when this box turns pink, they just come along for the ride. And that's what this very last step up top here is for. It's called apply to range. We wrote the code. Now let's apply it or stretch it out to some other pixels. We already have this box that's B4 to B7 and we'll add some more. Click here, a window pops up, we're gonna slide it over. I'm going to select now the other pixels I want to turn that color, but first I need to hold down a button on my computer. That button is control. It's usually in the bottom left hand corner. If you have a Mac, hold down command. Keeping that held down with one finger, use your other hand to click on the pixels you want to add. The reason I'm holding down control is because that lets me select many different pixels without losing the ones that I had initially selected. And you can see up there that nine box is still selected, which is important. We do need to keep that box in our code. Now I've selected the colors that I want to change, or the pixels, I'm going to lift up on control. And to finish this, I need to do three steps. The first step is to hit OK on the range. The second step is to hit Done on the code. The third step is very important and very easy to forget. Come up to the paint bucket, click Reset. Now we're done. Click off of it because everything's selected right now and let's test it. Click on that nine box, hit delete or backspace, pixels disappear. Put the nine in it and you have to click off of it for the code to activate. There it is. And I can see it over here if I needed to open it and do anything to it. Now before we continue, I'm gonna take the nine out. Code is still there, but the nine isn't because I want my picture to be disappearing in front of my eyes. I don't wanna get confused about what I have and have not already coded. All right, so let's go on to our next one. I'm gonna pick my color first. I think I wanna do some of this lightest brown. It's just the inside of the envelope. I'm going to click on it just so I can find it. It's the first custom color, great. Now, very important, I need to click back on the box I'm actually coding, because I'm not coding the picture, I'm only coding the answer boxes. I'm ready to write a code for this box, so I'm going to click Add Another Rule. And we'll do it all over again. Start at the bottom, tell the computer what color you want it to turn. Next, we'll write the code telling the computer the column and row of that eight box and that the answer to four times two is eight. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column. Dollar sign eight, that's the row. Equals eight, that's the column. This code is technically done and we just wanna add some of the colors from the artwork. Now, I'm not gonna do all of that color. See so here, slide this over, hold down control. The reason I'm not doing all of this color is because I have seven colors in my picture. You can see that in the column over here. And there are nine questions. So if I have more questions than colors, if I just did every single question was, you know, all of the dark brown, all of the light brown, all of the pink, then my picture would appear too soon. So I am gonna split up just a couple of the colors. So I took about half of them. Now lift up on control. Make sure that box there, that eight, that one still needs to be selected. If it's not, hold down control again and click on it. Do your three steps. Hit OK on the range, done on the code, and reset the paint bucket. Click off of it and test it. Put your eight back in and your nine if you wanna test them both. And there we go. All right, we're not gonna hang around with those though because we want it to be disappearing. For our next one, I don't know, let's do this dark pink here. I'll do all the dark pink. There's not that much of it. I like to find it first, okay, second from the right, then click back on the one you're actually coding, which is the February box and click add another rule. Start at the bottom, tell it what color. Then we'll write our code telling it the column and row of the box and that it needs to have the word February in it. So B is the column, 12 is the row, equals February. I wanna show you something. See how it turned white? Because the code is incorrect. February is a word, and if your answer is a word, you have to do one more step. You have to put quotation marks around the word. Turned pink to show us it's correct. So you don't have to do that with numbers, but if it's a word, put quotes around it, just like if it were dialogue in a book. Now we're clicking on the range. Hold down control and selecting all of the dark pink. And again, I know I split up some of the light 
brown, but I don't have to split up all the colors. So I'm only splitting up a couple colors and there's not a lot of dark pink, so I might as well use it all. If you click on something you don't mean to like that, you can delete it right there or easier, just click on it again. Okay. All right. Think about those three steps we need to do now. Hit OK on the range, done on the code, and then reset the paint bucket. There we go. Okay. So I have, I believe, five colors left. So let's see here. I have one pink and four browns. I have this dark brown, brown, light brown, lightest brown. So four browns, and then I have a pink. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six colors left, or questions left, sorry. So I'm gonna split up. So the next two that I do, I'll do like half of it. So let's say I'll do the dark brown here, which is this one, but I'll do half of it. Um, actually just splitting up one, sorry. So I said I had five colors left, okay. So if I have five colors till the end, one, two, three, four, five. I want those last five questions to be the full color. So like all of the pink, all of the light brown, whatever it is. So I'm gonna do half of the dark brown here and then I'll be left with five colors and five questions. So let me look at that dark brown and see where it's at. Second one in, okay. Clicking on the box I actually wanna code, which is the mercury box and clicking add another rule. And now I'll choose my color and I'll write my code. Custom formula is equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign 16, that's the row, equals quotation marks, mercury. If it stays brown, it worked. If it turns white, it didn't. Now we will apply to range. And like I said, I'm going to do half of the dark brown. While I'm doing this, I want to um, let you know that if you make any mistakes, that's very normal. This is a hard skill to learn, and it's so worth it to stick with it because it does require a lot of patience and perseverance, and that's really good for us. So stick with it, and don't be worried if you make mistakes. That's very normal. I made a lot of mistakes when I was learning. There is a video. It's off to the right there. It's kind of hidden at the moment, but it's called Common Pixel Art Mistakes and How to Fix Them. And it goes over five of the most common mistakes and how you can put them right pretty easily. You can also just find that on my channel under Pixel Art or any of the Pixel Art playlists will have it. So you can check that out afterwards too if there's anything that you're struggling with, either in this project or your own artwork. All right, once I have about half of those selected, lift up on control and do my three steps. Okay on the range, done on the code. I did the wrong quotation marks there. Hold on a sec. There we go. And then, okay, done on the code and then reset the paint bucket. Okay, now we can test these. Looking good. Okay, so like I was saying before, I now have five colors left because I didn't do all the dark brown. So I have dark brown, brown, light brown, lightest brown, and pink, and I have five questions left. So for every question I do, I'm going to do all the color. So let's say for my next one, I'll do all of this light brown. And then for that one, I'll do the brown, this that color. I'll do all of it, all of the pink, all of the lightest brown, all of the dark brown, and then it'll finish right at the end.
All right, I left one pixel out, and I want to show you how to put that in if you have ones that are left over. You're going to cycle through these until you find the one that matches the color that you left out. Click and open up the code. Click on Apply to Range, and you're going to click Add Another Range. Hold down Control and click on the pixel or any of the pixels you left out. Hit OK, Done, and Reset. And now we're all finished. And like I said, you can cycle through here. You can see the codes popping up on the right there if you need to open them for any reason. Go ahead and close the coding window, though, and let's put our answers in, and we'll see how it looks. So like I said, there's a video over there on the bottom right that'll help you with common mistakes. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this project.